The history of gumbo. Gumbo is often used as a metaphor for the mix of cultures that exist here in southern Louisiana. Gumbo made popular by Louisiana culture combines the culinary practices of Native American tribes, French, Spanish, Africans, Italians, and Germans. These cultures influenced each other, creating an environment that cultivated new traditions and new cuisine. The establishment of New Orleans in 1718 marked the beginning of French colony of Louisiana. French settlers worked together with various Native American tribes, from whom they learned new methods of cooking and ways to identify edible indigenous plants, such as the sassafras and bay leaves. In the language of the native Choctaw people, filet, or ground sassafras leaves, was called combo. Slave ships began arriving in Louisiana in 1719. The first ships carried rice and men who were experienced in its cultivation. The grain adapted well in its new environment here in Louisiana, and within a few years, rice was commonly grown along the Mississippi River. The new laborers also introduced new foods, including the African vegetable okra. In the Bantu language, spoken by many of the slaves from West Africa, the word used for okra was known as ki ngumbo, which scholars suggest is the origin of the word gumbo. Germans came to Louisiana and introduced the art of making sausage, another key ingredient to making a good gumbo. The colony was transferred from French to Spanish control in 1762. The Spanish government actively recruited settlers from Spanish Louisiana. About 2,000 from the Canary Islands moved to the area south of New Orleans. These settlers were primarily fishermen who soon began supplying large amounts of shrimp, crab, and oysters to the food markets in New Orleans. The Canary Islands also brought a love for well-seasoned food, including the use of ground cayenne pepper and a spicy hot red chili pepper. Spanish authorities also granted permission for a large number of French-speaking Acadian exiles to relocate from northeastern North America to Louisiana. From 1755 through 1795, almost 3,000 of these settlers, now known as Cajuns, moved to the area south and west of New Orleans. Louisiana was secretly returned to France in 1800, then purchased by the United States in 1803. Now you have a little history about the origin of gumbo. Let's talk about how to make gumbo. Gumbo, in essence, is a thick soup. The key ingredient that's used to gum to thicken the soup is roux. Roux is a vegetable oil and flour mixture, slowly cooked until it's dark brown. At the same time you start your roux, you should also want to start your stock. In a large stock pot, fill halfway with water, then add onions, bell peppers, celery, green onion, and bay leaves. Cook for at least an hour before any roux is added to it. Add a little roux at a time until you've reached your desired thickness. Continue to stir well. Salt, black pepper, cayenne pepper, onion powder, and a little chili powder are some of the seasoned spices added to the stock with your meats. Or you can use your favorite seasoned salt such as, such as Tony Sachery or Slap Your Mama Cajun Seasoning found at your local grocer. Now there are many types of gumbo. There's chicken and sausage, seafood gumbo, including shrimp, crab, or oyster, okra gumbo, duck and andouille, even rabbit. One key thing to remember when cooking gumbo is to take into account how long the meat you're adding takes to cook. Duck or sausage should be added long before any shrimp or crab. Total cooking, got, total cooking time is two to three hours. For example, two hours for seafood or three hours for all other meats. If you like, you can finish off with a little filet after the pot is removed from the heat. Gumbo usually does not include any beef or pork unless it's a mixture in the smoked sausage. But remember, there are many variations of gumbo. Some thicker, some thinner. Some darker, some lighter. Gumbo is like the world. A little bit of everything makes it good.